What is going on, my fellow DeFi DGENs? Today, we're going to be looking at Etherscan, the most popular and advanced uh, block explorer for the Ethereum blockchain. There is a crap ton of stuff that you can actually do on Etherscan, but today, we're only going to be touching on the stuff that I personally think will be important for any regular user of Ethereum, DeFi, MetaMask, etc. So, if you don't know anything about Etherscan, then you came to the right place. Now, right off the bat, obviously, we are currently on the homepage of Etherscan, and you'll obviously see the general stuff here, right? The price per ETH over here, the market cap of Ethereum, the latest blocks to your left, and the latest transactions to your right. Honestly, you're not going to be on this page that often, so we're going to get straight into the important stuff, uh, which is going to be the account address. So just starting from the top and kind of going uh, all the way down, uh, some of the most important stuff you're going to want to keep in mind is number one, making sure you're on the right account, okay? This is gonna be the address on the top. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, number two is gonna be obviously the Ethereum balance over here to your left and the value of that balance um, right underneath it. Uh, and, and I will say as straightforward as this is, it does start to get a little bit complicated when you take a look at the tokens. Now obviously you know Ethereum, it's on the Ethereum blockchain, therefore there are other ERC20 tokens and NFTs or ERC721s uh, that can also be in your wallet as well. So, you know, pretty much if you're ever worried about potentially not seeing your coin uh, that you know you have, like in your MetaMask or wallet or whatever, go on Etherscan and it like 100% should show up assuming that you have it. So you can see I have a whole bunch of different coins here, <laughs> some of them that actually should be burned. Um, but if you take a look, again, it includes ERC20s and it also includes a couple of NFTs that I have as well. As you can see, my little Mebit is right there too. If you do want to see a little expanded view of that, you can click on here. And it actually shows really well. Wow, this is actually such a cool page, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't even know you could do this until earlier. Just another way to view your wallet if you really want to go ahead and take a look at uh, what it's worth, essentially. Now, kind of piggybacking off that, what if you do want to use and see your coin in MetaMask, right? Well, it's actually a lot easier to add your coin uh, than, it than it previously used to be. So if you go ahead and take a look, let's try to add, uh, let's add uh, this one over here, the gas token for one inch. As you can see over here, you get a whole bunch of stuff here, and if you take a look at my wallet, um, you're probably not going to see that uh, one-inch token here, at least I don't think. Uh, here we go, yep. So I have pretty much everything else here besides my one-inch token. So what I can do to add it uh, is actually press right over here on More and Add Token to MetaMask Web3. Bam. And right there, it'll just go ahead and add, it'll tell me my balance and the token, should be the picture there, but it's not showing, <laughs> and Add Token. And then if I take a look again, it should pop up now. Let's see, all the way over here, bam. There we go. So you can do that with any ERC20 uh, token, and I assume you could probably do the same with any ERC, well, actually, could you do that with ERC721? Let's take a look. If we take a look here, let's go ahead and go down to Mebits, press on more, and add token to MetaMask. There you go, bam. Also allows you to add ERC721s as well. So. Either scan is a lot more useful for these little small intricate things that you probably wouldn't even think that they'd actually be used for. <laughs> Weird. Uh, let's keep going down the uh, account. All right, now glassing over the bottom of the page. Now, if it isn't already obvious, the pretty much the rest of this page is just going to be a list of all the transactions that you've made on your account. Um, some of them including internal transactions, uh, ERC twenty ones, and ERC seven twenty one uh, specific transactions. This is just going to be you know any interaction you had with any coin. And ERC721 is going to be any interaction you had with any type of NFT, essentially. So probably going to be a lot of uh, OpenSea stuff if you use that use that quite a bit. Uh, but what I'm really going to touch on is because you know you can kind of see what happens here, and I think Etherscan has done a great job in actually, um, I guess, showing you what method like occurred within your account. We're actually going to look at the ones over here to the right. So number one is loans. This is something really cool. Uh, if you are using DeFi in any type of capacity, uh, and it's one of these main, looks like, uh, players over here, so Compa Compound, Aave, Cream, Maker, or Curve, then you're going to go ahead and be shown, uh, you know, what type of balance you actually have within one of those pools. Which, again, I think I feel like this is such a probably an overlooked uh, feature because I've never seen anyone use it before. <laughs> I've never used it before. Uh, and I was providing liquidity for Curve at some point. But, you know, I guess I, I was too late to check it and, you know, I wasn't able to see if I had, had any. So if you do have any liquidity providing uh, currently for any of these platforms, uh, take a look. You know, maybe see how it uh, like actually shows up. I'm actually interested to see. We can take a look at analytics next, which is just going to kind of give you a breakdown of as I mentioned, all the analytics in your account. It'll show you all the, like, in this case, the highest amount of Ethereum I ever had in this account, the lowest amount, all the transactions I did, 
it kind of shows you like by, by like a little chart view. Let's see uh, when I paid the most transaction fees. I paid 0.1 transaction fees on September 2020. Wow, September 2020, what did I, what did I do then? Oh my God, <laughs> that's crazy. So yeah, I mean, and keep in mind, all this stuff isn't only for just your account that you can look at it. Uh, you can look at this for any account, transactions, internal, ERC-20, ERC-721, loans, analytics, um, as well as comments. <laughs> this is always a funny one. I think if you go to some of the main addresses, like if you go to Vitalik's address, you'll probably see a bunch of people like shilling their stuff in the comments, most likely. <laughs> so, you know, that's also that's always something funny. Uh, but that's going to be the main stuff for the uh, main account page. Again, just kind of making sure you're on the right page, looking at the different types of tokens that you have, and just checking out some of the transactions and making sure that everything uh, is up to par, as they say. Uh, mainly just because, you know, there's a lot more stuff you can do on this page, and that's going to be a general theme throughout this video. There's a lot more stuff that you can do. I just want to really scratch the surface for the most part. You may have also noticed that on the right over here, instead of saying my account address, like it should, it actually says my uh, ENS domain, so befresh.eth, that I went ahead and bought a couple, I think it was, I don't know, like a couple weeks ago, uh, but essentially I bought it from the Ethereum name service website uh, right over here, so if you are looking for a better way to identify your address, you can go here, or you can check out today's sponsor, uh, Good Names. Good Names specializes in selling premium ENS domains and has over 600 plus names available on OpenSea, uh, as you can tell on my screen. They also have some pretty interesting ones, uh, including, but not limited to, uh, longest word in the dictionary. Um, and I'm going to try to read this. A new mode from Mick Police. I'm not going to. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Um, <laughs> yeah, the longest word in the dictionary, uh, as well as numeric domains like 222.eth, which apparently happened to be pretty valuable in Asia. I had no idea. Uh, so if you are looking for a cool ENS domain, uh, check them out on OpenSea. Again, goodnames.eth. Uh, link will be down below. Uh, I appreciate them for sponsoring today's video. Thank you, guys. Now let's go ahead and uh, talk about speeding up transactions. So for today's example, in terms of speeding up a transaction, we're going to go ahead and try to speed up a uh, transfer of one of my Punji Penguins to another account. So let's go ahead and let's say I want to transfer this guy over here, this yellow guy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look and let's see, we're gonna go ahead and transfer this little guy. We're gonna put in, uh, I, think I, have a, I think I have an ENS domain called Oceanman. <laughs> Oceanman.eth, okay, there we go, yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and transfer that. And it does say right now it's $6.80. Let's go ahead and underbid. Let's go ahead and make that a lot lower. Let's go ahead and make it $5.71. Why not, right? I wanna pay as low as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and try to confirm it. Now. You know, when you're, whenever you're transferring everything or trying to execute a transaction, uh, that obviously potentially you paid a little bit under the market value for a gas price for, uh, obviously it's just going to load forever, right? So un unless the gas prices go down dynamically, which never happens, um, you're probably going to have to speed it up. So what we can do is take a look actually at Etherscan or, you, you know, you can actually take a look at it from MetaMask or just look at it from, you know, in this case, OpenSea just leads you to the page. And it'll tell you actually where the transaction is in terms of the queue uh, and kind of just approximately how long it'll take to confirm. So here it says zero to 51 minutes, which doesn't really help me at all. Uh, and although it looks like it's about to get executed, trust me, I've had transactions sitting here for quite, quite some time. So we're going to go ahead and actually speed it up here. Now, there may be a way to speed it up over here on uh, Etherscan, but what you're really going to want to do is go to MetaMask. And this used to be harder. Uh, but they've actually made it a lot easier now. All you have to do is, as you see here, click on speed up. Go ahead and click on a higher uh, value. In this case, let's just say, uh, I'm going to bite the bullet. We're going to do fast just so we can see it happen in real time. Okay. <laughs> this is for you guys, right? This is for you guys. So I went ahead and sped, sped it up. Let's see if it actually loads up and completes pretty quickly. I hope it does because I did pay, I think, the highest gas price there. In this case, it was like $8. And it's complete. There you go. Bam. Now, it's going to look like it's actually uh, still loading on this page. But that's only because technically when you speed up a transaction, you're not technically speeding it up, speeding up the current one. You're actually replacing that transaction with a newer one, but with a uh, lower nuance. A um, whole bunch of stuff here, but you'll see it'll actually literally tell you here that it's a duplicate nuance and that another one already completed, uh, you know, similar to the one you just uh, sent out. So we're good. That's all you have to do is press the little speed up button on MetaMask and you're good to go. But I guess what I mean is like you can use Etherscan to see where your transaction is in terms of being completed. And if it tells you it's like an hour away from being completed, you're probably going to want to speed it up. The next thing, token approvals. This is going to be very important. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, if, you have, if you've been doing a lot of DeFi, DGen farming and stuff like that, or interacting with 
um, less reputable contract addresses, you're really going to want to pay close attention to this. So to actually get here, all you got to do is go to more and click on token approvals. Now, once you're here, you can technically look up any uh, Ethereum address or, you know, that you want, but I'm going to go ahead and put in my own because why would I want to look at someone else's? <laughs> We're going to go ahead and put in bfresh.eth and this is going to be all the uh, current token approvals that I have. Now, essentially what this is, is all the different contracts that I've approved uh, to give access to actually spend my own tokens for me. Uh, now, you may ask, why the hell would I do that? But that's kind of how uh, Ethereum kind of currently works. You know, for you to interact with like a DEX or any type of, yep, any type of like a swapping or liquidity providing mechanism, uh, you need to give the contract access to your wallet to spend a certain amount of tokens uh, and a specific token at, at that. So in this case, you'll see that I have a bunch of different tokens here. USDC, BitGear from a while ago, Uniswap, Lambda and Tau, Status, uh, Synthetics, Wrapped a Mirror, and Ether. Now this is going to be a little tricky, uh, mainly because you don't want to go ahead and just start revoking everything. Uh, you know, for example, uh, I use Uniswap V2 and V3 quite a bit. So in this case, I, I'm, not, I'm not really going to want to start revoking this stuff because that means every time I go back and want to either provide liquidity or actually exchange a token, I'll have to reapprove that same token again. You know what I mean? So if you're looking for convenience, I wouldn't just get rid of all the different like reputable uh, spenders in this case, because uh, you may use them again and you, and you really don't want to have to spend uh, another transaction fee to be able to spend it. However, uh, where you do again want to go ahead and potentially um, revoke access to one of these, and we're going to do it today as well, um, is if it's a spender that you don't really use anymore. And as I mentioned earlier, if it's kind of like nefarious, mainly because if there's just so happens to be, let's say a bug in the code of this one, the Wyvern token transfer, right? They'll be able to spend any tokens in my wallet. Um, that's ETH in this case, as you can see, the Wyvern token transfer has access to spend unlimited wrapped ether, uh, on my behalf, <laughs> you know what I mean? So if there's somehow, to, there's, there's somehow a bug in their contract, um, and someone's able to get in there, they may be able to spend all my tokens and they'll be able to make away with it. Keep in mind, I don't have almost any any of these coins in my wallet. I mean, let me see. Let's take a look at, I don't have any wrapped ETH either, actually. Let me see, let me take a look at uh, the coins that I have. I don't have any USDC, I don't, I have status in there. So I could, I could try to revoke that. In this case, I may have wrapped ETH or USDC in my wallet uh, one day again. So let's go ahead and revoke the this one. Uh, 400 days ago, I approved the Kyber contract uh, to spend unlimited USDC, which we do not want. So let's go ahead and uh, connect my Web3 wallet over here. Uh, press OK. There we go. Now I'm connected. And I can go ahead and revoke the Kyber one. Let's see how much it costs. Oh, wow, it's actually really cheap. All right, good. <laughs> That's even better. All right, there we go. Approve USDC spend. So here it went ahead and, and I guess approved the limit and probably changed it to zero USDC is what I'm assuming. Let's take a look, and now it's gone. Bam. Let's do the same thing with the wrapped ether because I completely forgot what the hell this was, and I don't honestly like knowing that they can spend unlimited wrapped ether on my behalf. $2.24, even better. Yes, wonderful. View the transaction, and let's see how quick it is. Let's see how quick it is. All right, it's taking too long. Let's speed it up. <laughs> there we go. Speed it up. We're going to take it too fast. Bam. All right. Let's see if it uh, if it goes through. Let's go ahead and take a look at my transaction as well, the new one. And as you can see, it should be completed in about 45 seconds, and we're almost at the 100% mark. So now we should be fine. I realize, by the way, I'm making it look longer than it actually is because I keep on refreshing, but this is just for the sake of the video. Why not? <laughs> now, if we refresh the page, it shouldn't be there anymore either. Beautiful. So we just got rid of two different uh, contracts that pretty much allowed themselves to spend an unlimited amount of whatever it was. Uh, I would potentially remove this one too, as it is an unverified contract, but I literally have no more deuce at all, so I really don't care about it too much. So we should be good. Uh, again, make sure to check yours out and you know see which tokens that you have in there or which contracts that have access to your tokens. This is something that's going to be really important, trust me, if you are involved in any DeFi stuff. All right, smart contracts, reading and writing. Now, uh, we're going to touch on something a little more technical in this case. And, you know, in this case, as I mentioned, it's going to be reading and writing two smart contracts. Now, we're going to use the Pudgy Penguins project, uh, the NFT project, actually, as an example, since, as you guys saw earlier, your boy does have a couple. Did it end up transferring, actually? I wonder. Let me see. I do have a couple of these, as you can see. Um, I have about one, two, three in my account currently. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is start off with reading it. Now, just to be clear here, 
Uh, this is going to be different than, like, for example, the account page that I have. You'll see that, you know, there's two different types of addresses on Ethereum, essentially. There is a external, externally owned account address, which is just going to be anything that you guys have or I have. It's pretty much an Ethereum address with a private key. Uh, and then you have contract addresses, which is pretty much what this is, uh, which may look similar, but it's a lot different, especially when you take a look at the bottom tabs down here. Uh, the main thing that it's going to have is the fact that it's a contract right there, bam. And it even shows you like the actual contract itself sometimes, you know, the code if you want to go ahead and audit it yourself. But, you know, I'm not an auditor, so you can always go here and click it out if you know how to audit yourself. Uh, but I don't. <laughs> Let's go ahead and reading the contract. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to number four over here, balance of, and we're going to go ahead and check uh, how many uh, pudgy penguins I personally have by reading the contract and, you know, seeing how much I have. In this case, I've already, already done it you know, spoiler alert. So we're going to go ahead and click on my address here and press query. You'll see here, it's going to tell me that I have three pudgy penguins. Uh, now, if again, if you are familiar with JavaScript, I think it is, uh, that you're probably going to understand all this stuff like, you know, UINT 256, uh, all these different little functions here. But the point of being able to read a contract on Etherscan is pretty much the ability to actually like verify, you know, what you're seeing on Ethereum. So, Again, again, there are a bunch of other things that you can do when it comes to reading contracts other than just checking how many, you know, uh, specific tokens you have. Uh, but the important takeaway here is that if you ever do want to verify anything from a smart contract, Etherscan allows you to check it uh, using the read option here, right? All right, so now writing contracts. Uh, in this case, it's going to be similar uh, in terms of, like, you're going to have to connect your Web3 wallet, uh, in this case, MetaMask, of course, and, you know, go ahead and do something similar to reading. The difference is that uh, this is actually going to cost you ETH depending on what you want to do. So in this case, you can transfer stuff, you can mint stuff, uh, burn stuff, and obviously it's going to depend on the per contract. Like you can't do this with every uh, contract address. But one example that I did actually, and I'll throw it up on the screen now, is uh, transferring my Uniswap V3 position from one wallet to another. Uh, on Uniswap's front end, they don't give you the ability to do that, which I think they really should, honestly. I think that's kind of, you know, important, I would think. Uh, but... I had to actually go into the contract address for my uh, liquidity provider position and literally do like a transfer from and from my address to another and, you know, go ahead and write it to the blockchain uh, and do it that way. It was my first time ever actually using Etherscan to write to a contract, uh, but it makes you feel a lot smarter. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if a friend ever does go down or I think some people have been using it uh, to mint NFTs on drop day, you can always come to Etherscan and just write directly to the contract, which should bypass a lot of the... Um, kind of like intricacies that, you know, a front end comes with. Now, I'd like to add that there is a bunch more that you can do on Etherscan. Um, I really only chose to cover like what I use it for and what I pretty much think will be important for you guys in the short term. You know, obviously you guys can learn more on your own by just kind of exploring the website and just interacting with it, you know, making an account. That's what I kind of did the other day, you know, watching different accounts and stuff like that. Uh, it's a really, really cool website, um, especially since they're going to be using they're going to be on so many different other chains like Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum. Um, I think they've already announced like pretty much all of them. With that being said, leave a comment down below. Do you guys have any features that you specifically know that no one else knows about? You know what I mean? Is there anything, something hidden that you would like tell a newbie about? Uh, you know, just getting into Etherscan and, you know, like a little tip or trick. Uh, let me know down below and let the other people know down below. Who knows? Maybe it's something that no one else knows about. Whoever comes up with the most uh, interesting answer is going to actually get an ENS domain from Good Names. Um, the details on that aren't quite specific, I don't think. So just when, you, when you watch the video, just go ahead and leave something down below and you may you may win a, you know, an ENS domain, okay? I'll <laughs> if you end up winning, I'll send you a message on YouTube or something. Um, that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.